Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. So I'm glad that you're here this morning. It's a beautiful day that God has blessed us with the sunshine, the warmer weather, the rain that we got makes things green and makes them grow. So, and what a blessing we we have to have this congregation, this building, this group of people to come together and meet, and encourage each other, lift each other you know, in prayer, um, and to. Uh, to study together and to grow together, it's it's a blessing. And it's a blessing to come together to worship God today. Let's let's start by going to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day to worship you. It's a day of celebration to worship and prayer and study and fellowship. It's a day of worship to a living God who holds heaven out to us and proclaims life over death and who has prepared a place for us, his children, his heirs, prepared a place in heaven. Come fill our hearts afresh with your love. May it overflow with heaven's bounty moving through this service, through this day of rest, and into the week ahead. In your holy name we pray, amen. amen. Jeremiah 10, verses six through seven, Say, no one is like you, O Lord. You are good, and your name is mighty in power. Who should not revere you, O King of the nations? This is your due. Among all the wise men of all the nations, and in all their kingdoms, there is no one like you. If you're able, please stand. and Let's sing together to our awesome God.
2 starts by saying, My heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer for all my enemies. I rejoice because you have rescued me. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. Yes, there is no rock like our God. Let's continue to lift up our rock in praise. including that he is the light.
praise and worship by the collecting of our tithes and offerings. Will the ushers please come forward? If you're a visitor, please don't feel obligated to give, but we do welcome you here. So next step Bible study is Wednesday. At what time? Seven. I didn't hear. Seven. Oh, thank you. That's better. We're in the book of Genesis. Chapter 11 is coming up. I can't even tell you how exciting it is. If you've studied Genesis before, if you have not studied Genesis before, join us. You can even see it online, so please join us. Sunday school, now that Colin's gone, will resume the last Sunday of each month. So this month it'll be on the 25th, and Brittany will be teaching. We have a conference coming up, Men or Maker Conference. That's going to be Friday, September 27th through Saturday, September 28th. For more information, you can check your bulletins and how to sign up. It's in the back there. The other thing I want you to remember this week is the prayer list. Please, please, please remember the people on the prayer list. Take time when you're praying to pray for them. The food pantry is operating and it is open on Sunday at 8.30 a.m. and on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Sharon's here to help with that. Uh, if you, when you're walking along the back hallway, you will see a list of items that you can bring and donate for the food pantry. We talked about the greeting cards and we want to thank all the people who donated greeting cards. There is two big boxes back there. So if you know someone who needs a touch, a happy birthday, uh, something, anything, please avail yourself of the greeting cards and make that happen for someone. We thank you. Join us in singing this next song, which is preparation for prayer. It's inviting and welcoming the Holy Spirit into this service, into our lives and hearts. Of the sweetest of love. 
morning, everybody. Um, please join with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, uh, we have come here this morning for the purpose of worshiping you. So as we worship, I just ask, Lord, that we would uh, clear all of the noise and craziness of this world out of our minds, uh, all of the problems of last week, all of the potential problems of the coming week. Just remove it all, Lord, and help us to focus on you, to focus on your greatness and on your great love for us, uh, to remember that you loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus, who was without sin, down to earth, to die a shameless, um, shameful death on the cross for us to remove our sins so that we could share eternal salvation with you. What a glorious gift, Lord, and we just thank you so much of your uh, never-ending love for us. As we continue in worship this morning, Lord, I ask that you would be with Dan. Uh, pray a special blessing for him as he brings the message to us. And also, as Benny mentioned in the announcements, uh, I'd like to remember all the people on our prayer list, Lord. Uh, the needs there are many. There's um, emotional, physical sickness, uh, financial troubles, uh, many other situations. You know all of them, Lord. And I just ask that your will be done in each of these uh, situations. Um, Lord, we love you, and I just ask you that you would continue to be with us in this time of worship. It's in the name of your Son, Jesus, that I pray all these things. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Psalm 73, verses 24 through 26, say, You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. Though my health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. If you're able and willing, please stand. Let's sing this song that declares there's nothing better than God.
sind. Good morning. Good morning. You get that song, right? Yeah. It's so cool. Graves into right. things that were dead come alive. That's me. He brought me back to life. You? Yes. Say yes. Yeah. 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 It's good. I can tell you're excited by the silence. <laughs> ah, come on, let's go, let's go. Hey, uh, take the Bible that's in front of you there, if you would please turn to the book of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Paul's second letter to these folks. We're going to look at chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. What are those two page numbers? We have Bibles with, uh, it's the same translation, but different fonts. One of those pages, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Chapter 3, 1 and 2. If you have it, say yes. 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 Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us. Pray that the Lord's message will spread rapidly and be honored wherever it goes, just as when it came to you. Pray, too, that we will be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not everyone is a believer. So Paul is asking for prayer for himself here, and actually he says us. This is for himself and Silas and Timothy. He's kind of writing on behalf of all three of them. Paul and Silas and Timothy. One aspect of Christian life, it's not the only aspect, but a, a part of Christian life, and actually a part of Christian community, is that we pray for each other. We pray for each other. We're a community, yes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're a community of believers. And so I pray for you, you pray for me. We all have stuff going on in our lives, right? Yes. You got stuff going on, I got stuff. By the way, that's a technical theological term. I looked it up, stuff. It was in a big, heavy book. We have things going on in our lives that are of concern to us, things that are pressing. Probably some of us have things that are, like, they matter a lot to us, and we don't really have any power to control it in any significant way. And so it's good, it's fair, it's reasonable, it's right to ask other believers, hey, would you join me? Would you pray about this with me? Pray for me. And by the way, this is not a weakness. When we come to others and we say, hey, would you pray for me? It's not a last ditch effort. Like, well, this seems like a lost cause. Everything else has failed. Let's throw, through, uh, let's throw a few prayers at it too. No, this is normal life in a Christian community. This is normal for us to pray for each other. And you know, the Bible says that when we talk to God, he listens to us. Isn't that an amazing thing? You and I, we're just regular people. There's billions of us wandering around here on earth. We pray and God hears our prayers. And again, as part of our prayers, we pray for each other. So the Apostle Paul asks, and we see this at other times in Scripture too. This isn't the only point in which Paul asked for prayer. In Romans chapter 15, verse 30, Paul asked for prayer. In uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19, Paul says, hey, pray for me. So it's good, it's right, it's fair, it's proper, it's reasonable to go to our brothers and sisters in Christ and say, hey, something's going on in my life. Would you pray for me? Have you done this? It's a good thing to do. It's a good thing to do. It, can, it helps to create our connection, too, with each other. Now, Paul had some specificity when it came to the... Specificity. <laughs> Five syllables. Some specificity when it came to the prayer he was asking them to offer. He prays, I'm going to cover several things that he asked for, specifics. The first one is this. He prays that the message will spread rapidly. See, Paul has this amazing passion. This is putting it mildly. He has this incredible passion, passion for seeing the message of Jesus being communicated everywhere. He wants this message to go out to everyone. And we see that passion expressed in this request. He's saying, hey, I, gotta, I would like you to pray for me. Well, what's he going to ask for? Pray that as we go out there with this message, that it spreads rapidly. He wants everyone to accept this and embrace and believe in Jesus. Now, Paul, really dumb guy or very smart guy? 
Smart. Very smart guy. Paul knows, he's got enough experience with life, he knows reality enough to know that not everybody who hears the message of Jesus is going to accept it and embrace it. He knows that. As a matter of fact, there was a time in Paul's own life when he rejected Jesus. So he knows not everybody's going to accept it. There was a time, and you know, it would, be, it would be fair to characterize it this way. There was a time in Paul's life when he knew about Jesus, this guy Jesus, and he was this teacher, and he, and he died, and he rose again. Paul hated that message. He hated it. Hated it. Persecuted people who were spreading it. But Paul now has changed. He knows, he knows not everybody's going to accept it. He knows, because he was there himself at one time. But Paul's hoping that this message is going to go out there, and, and there will be people. See, when we tell the message of Jesus, there are people who will receive it. Not everybody. But there are people who will hear about Jesus, and the truth of who he is will, will resonate. It's like they've been waiting to hear this. The truth of his life and his death and his resurrection, it's going to ring in their hearts. And they're, they're going to hear it and they're going to realize Jesus is alive. This is real. Through a work of the Holy Spirit, they'll know it's true and they'll believe it, even though they've never heard it before. Even though it's like, this sounds too good to be true. It sounds like all kinds of miracles and supernatural. Something in them is going to realize this is real. This is real and I need him. And they're going to hear the message of Jesus and they're going to come to saving faith in Jesus Christ. Our job is not to make that happen. Our job is to tell. Hey, by the way, is this something that you ever do? Do you talk about Jesus with people? Sure. You say, well, I'm not really supposed to do that. If Jesus is your Lord, your Lord says you're supposed to do that. Yes? So Paul has this evangelist heart, this incredible zeal. Hey, folks in Thessalonica, I'm, I'm asking you to pray for me. What would you like, Paul? Pray that as we go out there, that this message will spread rapidly. He has another part of this request. What else, Paul? Pray that the message of Jesus is honored wherever it goes. Now, let me ask you something. Because you, even if you don't have a lot of expertise in this, you, you know the answer to this, I think. Is it possible, in fact, we won't even use the word possible, is it pretty likely that there are going to be places where the message of Jesus is shared and yet it's not going to be honored? Is that likely? Yes. Yeah, absolutely, yes, of course, yes. There are places the, the message will go out and people will hear it, they'll understand it, but they will not accept it, they will not honor it, they will reject it. We know that that's going to happen. Matter of fact, Jesus himself, while he was here on earth, he went to his own hometown one time after he began his ministry, and they rejected him in his own hometown. There's another instance, I was thinking about this earlier this morning. I'm thinking about, you know, rejecting Jesus. Does, are people going to reject him? Yeah. After Jesus was crucified and rose again, so this is post-resurrection Jesus, he's alive glorified body towards the very end of his time here on earth he tells his disciples this is in the, the towards the end of the book of Matthew he says hey go meet me over on this mountain over here so they go meet him up there here's here's what it says this is the very end of the book of Matthew Jesus is going to ascend into heaven after he after he talks about all this it says then the 11 disciples left for Galilee going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go when they saw him they worshiped him Catch this next line. But some of them doubted. I read that, and that's all we're provided. We don't have, I'd like more detail. Doubted? How do you, what do you doubt? There he is. You know he died. What? How can you be doubting? We're not told. <laughs> My point, are there people who are going to reject Jesus? Yeah. The risen, living Jesus is standing right in front of you. I just don't know about this, Christian. <laughs> right? 
It's amazing. So yeah, it's going to be rejected. So that brings up a question. You know, I sit with this stuff all week long and I look and I think and I pray about it and I say, Lord, what, what's going on here? And this question occurred to me, because this is a prayer request, right? Paul's saying, hey folks, pray for me. What do you want us to pray for? And he says, pray that the Lord's message will be honored wherever it goes. My question is, why would you ask for that when you know it's not gonna happen? Is it gonna be honored wherever it goes? No. So why are you telling them to pray for that? And that question is not answered in the text. See, I think that's a great question. Don't you think I came up with a great question? But it's not answered in the text. But I think the answer, so I can't say this is with certainty, but based on the rest of the Bible, taking the Bible into account, I think the answer is something like this. We're gonna ask God for his help. We're gonna put our full hope and trust and faith in him. We're gonna ask in a big way. We're gonna ask big. We're gonna request that God provides this big result that we're hoping for, and we're gonna hope that it, is, that it is fulfilled to the fullest extent that it could happen. Think of it this way. Maybe from a rational perspective, what we're praying for is very unlikely. I'm gonna pray anyhow. <laughs> Pray anyhow. I think about it like this. Like, I've heard people in my lifetime, I've heard people pray for, for peace in our world. Is that a terrible, terrible prayer or is that a good prayer? That's a pretty nice prayer. I'm going to pray for peace. It's an excellent idea. Now, with what we know about human beings and the history of man and human nature and the human heart, what we know about the ego and the vanity of people who tend to lead nations and countries and kings and all that kind of, do you think it's pretty likely in our world on this side of eternity that we're ever going to have complete and total peace? Like nobody's fighting anywhere. Nobody is at odds with each other. No nations, no groups, no tribes, no individuals are angry and fighting and at odds. Is that ever going to happen all over planet Earth all at the same time? Complete and total peace. Is that going to happen? You tell me. No. No. Well, why are you praying for peace then? Why would you even bother praying for it? Because we're going to ask for God to, to bring peace to the fullest extent that it can happen. A long time ago here at this church, many, many years ago, I was the pastor then, but I was pretty new at it all. And I set up a public prayer, like pastors do, and somebody came to me after the prayer. She was, very, she was a Christian, a very well-meaning person. She's not a villain in this story. She was actually very much trying to help me. But I said this prayer. And she came up to me afterwards and kind of pulled me aside. And she asked me this question. She said, hey, Dan, do you think it's a good idea for you as the pastor of the church to pray for something in front of the people at the church that, frankly, it's unlikely to happen. And no kidding, I was like, that's a good question. That's a good, I mean, she really got me, I, like, like, not for the next couple minutes, I, for days and weeks after that, I thought about that question. Wow, that's a very good question. Because I understood what she was getting at. She was saying to me, Dan, if you pray for something, and we all know it's not likely to happen, but here you are as the pastor, and then sure enough, turns out it doesn't happen. There are people at the church who might get discouraged by such a thing. Wow. I, she had me thinking about that for a long time. That's a very good question. But I finally determined this. The Bible says, not me, the Bible says in many, many places and in many different ways, the Bible says, ask. Ask. Ask God. Matter of fact, there's a, there's a verse that says, you have not because you ask not. Ask Him. Ask for the desires of your heart. Now, maybe God's answer will be no. You ask, and the answer is no. That's, that's happened to me many, many times. He, hey, he knows everything, and we don't, right? He knows everything. We don't know everything. But I've decided 
I, it was a good question, but I've decided I'm just going to go ahead and ask anyhow. Paul told these folks in Thessalonica, ask that the message of Jesus be honored wherever it goes. Paul been around. He, had, he, he knew. He knew about people. He was very aware of the fact that there was and there is and there will be resistance to Jesus. Strong, outright rejection to the message of Jesus. Paul knew that, but he clearly determined this. I'm asking you to pray for it anyhow. Pray anyhow. Pray, ask. Somebody in Thessalonica could have read Paul's letter and said, that's pretty unlikely to happen, Paul. I know. I'm asking you to pray anyhow. So I'm going to follow Paul's lead. And uh, there will be times, there have been times, and I'm sure there will be times again in the future that I'm going to ask God for something that's very, very unlikely. But who told me to ask? Who told me to ask? My mom? A pastor? Who told me? God. God told me to ask. He said to ask. So I'm going to ask. Hey, you know what? <laughs> who knows what he might do? Somebody came out after the 9 o'clock service, and they, they were saying something like, um, they said, uh, you can't ever put God into a box. We don't know what he, might, what he might pull. And I said, you're right. So I'm going to ask. Yes? Yeah. I'm going to keep asking. How about you? There's another thing that Paul asked for in this request. Thessalonica, hey guys, pray for me. And it's in verse 2. He says, pray that we will be rescued from, this is in the Bible text, wicked and evil people for not everyone is a believer. I have a theological question for you. My question is this, not based on your feelings, based on what the Bible says, are there people who are wicked and evil? Yes. Yeah, yeah there are. People make choices. We have the ability to make real true choices and sometimes we make bad ones. People make decisions, all of us. We make decisions regarding our behaviors and our attitudes. We exercise free will. I could have done this, I could have done that, I could have done that, and I chose free will. Um, and it's sad, it's too bad, we wish this wasn't the case, but wishful thinking doesn't change it. There are people who are wicked and evil. They willfully, on purpose, they know right and they know wrong and they choose on purpose to do what's wrong. Yes? Yes. Yeah? Hey, by the way, that's been me and you at one time or another too, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah? I'm not getting a lot of nods right now. I'm just getting very few. There have been times in my life, I'm a nice pastor boy. But there have been times in my life and there have been times in your life when we knew what was right, we knew what was wrong, we weren't confused, we weren't puzzled, it wasn't a mistake, we willfully chose to do what's wrong. Every single, by the way, I'm asking this only in a rhetorical sense because I already know the answer. The Bible is very clear on this. Every single one of us have chosen to sin, 100%, all of us. Everyone. The Bible says, but hey, by the way, if you never sin, you don't need Jesus. You Sinners need a Savior. If you've never sinned, you don't need a Savior. Congratulations. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Except I know that you have. <laughs> We've installed cameras in each of your homes. <laughs> hit it, hit it. So, uh, Paul says, basically, my paraphrase, hey, I know some things about people. We're going to be going out bringing this message. We're going to be out among people. I know some things about this crazy world that we live in. And so I'd like to ask you folks in Thessalonica, pray for us. Pray that we'll be rescued. That you'll be rescued. Rescued from what, Paul? From wicked and evil people. I got one more point. Are you doing okay? Yes. Are you feeling, I sense tremendous joy here. Are you feeling joyful? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, whistling even. Who can whistle the Andy Griffith theme song? <laughs> it's hard to whistle because you start laughing and you can't, you can't laugh and smile and whistle at the same time. That's in the Bible, by the way. I'm just more Bible. One more thing, and this. This just sort of, in a general sense, has to do with prayer, and in a general sense, it has to do with God in prayer. But I've been, you know, thinking about prayer so much this week, and God kind of, I, I feel like the Holy Spirit laid this on my heart. I have discovered, because I've been around for a long time, I've discovered that there's an objection that some people have when it comes to asking for prayer from others. Actually, this objection sometimes even filters over to just them individually going to God and asking him for things. The objection is this. I've heard people talk about this before. Here's their objection. I don't want to bother God with these, you know, seemingly minor things in my life. And when I've heard people say this kind of thing, it's something like this. I've heard something along these lines. They say something like, there's just so much going on in the world and there's so many problems and issues and there's war over here and unrest over there. And there are things, these are like big, significant, weighty things, heavy, heavy duty issues that are happening all around the globe. And I just feel bad burdening God, troubling God with my little stuff. Oh sure, it's important to me, but God has so many other important, huge things, global matters that he's dealing with. Ever hear anybody say something like this? I have a friend who said something along those lines a couple of years ago. I remember very distinctly. I thought, whoa. By the way, when somebody says something like that, I, I'm going to grant that there's something nice in it in this sense. In their mind, I understand they're trying to be considerate. I, I, I want to be considerate. I get that. But you need to know something. There's a mistake involved in that kind of thinking. Here's the deal. I want you to listen very closely because I really want you to make sure that you get this. Please hear this and understand this. You can't burden God with too many things. You don't have the capacity to do that. You don't have the ability to burden God with too many, it, it's not possible. Just think a little bit about who God is. We could go into a lengthy description, but just think of like, God's not bound by time. Think about, think about how it would change what you could do if, if there were no time constraints. See, all we've ever experienced is time follows one moment after another, one after another, and, and, and it just keeps going, going. Next thing you know, you're an old, fat, gray guy like me. What happened? Time. God doesn't exist and experience that the way that we do. God's not bound by space. Again, think about our whole experience of life is I'm here, therefore I can't be there. I'd sure love to be over at the beach over here, but I gotta be here right now. We, we all, all we know is this experience of physical space. That does not apply to God. God's here with us this morning, yes? Yes. He's at a church down in Texas right now too. Mm -hmm. And everywhere all over the globe. He's not bound in that way. His strength is not limited. Every person you know, they have a limit. Even the strongest person you know, there's a limit. Even groups of people, nations, countries, there's a limit to their strength, not God. He's all powerful. His mind, his knowing, his understanding, not limited. We say it this way, he's omniscient. He literally knows everything. We could go on and on. By, by the very nature of who God is, you can't bother him. You can't burden him with too many things. You don't have the capacity to do that. You're finite and he's infinite. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, there's a fantastic verse. Oh, wonderful. This is my present to you today. This passage of scripture, ready? It says this, give all, how much? All, give all your worries and cares to God because he cares about you. Bring it all. I don't want to burden him. You can't burden God. You don't, you don't have the ability to do that. So what's on your mind? What's going on? What's going on in your life? 
What's happening with you that's got you really concerned? What big thing, what little thing has been playing around in your head over and over again? Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. It's okay for you to pray about anything and everything. It's okay for you to ask for prayer about anything and everything. You can't burden God. You can't overwhelm God. You can't stress God out. You can't get God feeling nervous and worried. You can't bring God to the point that he's confused and bewildered. He doesn't know what in the world to do next. It's not possible to lay more on God than he can handle. So it's okay for you and me to pray. Ask people to pray for you. God can handle it. It's okay to bring the big and the ridiculously small things in your life to God. Hey, he wants this. He wants this interaction with us. Like you talk to him, he wants to do that. He wants that connection with us. He wants that. That's part, and that's part of the point of prayer. It has to do with our relationship with him. This is not an idea that I came up with this week in my office and thought, wow, this is a great idea. Maybe I could try and copyright this. This has been in the Bible for a long, long, long time. Give all your worries and cares to God, all of it. He cares about you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand up with you, would please. I sure would love if you guys would sing a song with me. Did you do that? <laughs> I need thee every hour, this is a little hymn. about anything she would love to uh, she would love to be a part of that bow your heads join me if you would please <clears throat> Lord Jesus your goodness your mercy your grace your love thank you that you care about us it's a wonderful thing it's an amazing thing like here we are a bunch of people in a little church in Oak Lawn Illinois and we're talking and the creator of the universe is listening to us. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, Jesus, you're really, really nice. Thank you for turning on the air. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting hot, Jesus. Thank you. Uh, Lord, I ask for your blessing upon every person in this room, every person who's watching online. May they know Holy Spirit, work in them in such a way today that it's like not just uh, like words that they heard in church, but like it, it, it's this is a truth that grips their souls, that they can come to you. And that we can come to you on behalf of each other. Let us be a, um, a powerful, significant, meaningful community of faith. I love these people, Lord. I feel their love for me and I'm grateful for that. Together, we love you and we know you love us even more. Thank you. Your grace, your mercy, your blessing on everyone here, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have a great week. <laughs>